Okay, let's get started. What we're here today to do is to demonstrate why layers and masks are important in processing photographs. And to do that, I've selected this image and I've made adjustments to the image. And so you can see on the right side, there are all these layers and masks that I've created to adjust the image. Now, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is start with what the base image looks like. And then I'm going to show you each adjustment and how I made it. And then you can see and why I made it. Then you can see the importance of layers and masks after that. So when I started with the base image, I noticed a few things about the image. So first of all, that there were no details in the waterfall. Now, at a thumbnail size like this, the image may not look too bad. But if you were to close up and zoom into the image, you will see that the waterfall is just a blob of white mass. And when you print this image, it actually looks pretty bad. Now, another way you can tell that there is nothing in the image is to look at a histogram. As you can see in a histogram, there is a spike on the right side indicating loss of detail. So let's go back and zoom out and see what we can do about that. Now, the first thing I did to fix the image was to restore the highlights. Now, the way I did that is by creating a layer and then blending just the parts of the waterfall. So let me turn on the layer and see what happens. As soon as I turn on the layers, you'll notice that the waterfall details in, in here and the cascade details of the lower, lower part of the waterfalls are both restored. So here you go. Now, you can see that the dis details are restored not only from the image, but also from the histogram. There's no spike on the light, and we can see exquisite amount of details all the flow lines in the water in both the lower and upper part of the waterfall. Now let's take a look at what the mask looks like. Now uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go to that layer and turn on just the mask and then turn off the rest of the image. As you can see, in order to blend this, I created this mask manually. And the mask has some blurred areas and some areas with uh, a sharp edge. And what it allows me to do is restore just the details where they're necessary, that is, in the highlights. The rest of the image where the mask is black is untouched. And this is probably one of the most powerful tools in Photoshop, is masks allows us to adjust images only when they're, where they're necessary. So let's go back to the image itself and see what other things we need to do. Well, oftentimes in a landscape photographs, what happens is that there are parts of the images that are not necessarily overexposed, but they look unnaturally bright because the sun is shining on them or they have white areas. Now, what do I mean by that? So let me see if I can show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go over here and draw some parts of the image where if you look at this, there's a rock face over here, which is brighter than the rest of the rock face on here and here. Similarly, there's a rock face over here, which is brighter. And the, one of the most obvious ones is this one. So now, the other thing you can do with layers and masks is make targeted adjustments. That means that the areas that I showed you, I can actually selectively go and replace it. So let's take this lower area over here, for instance. Now, as you can know, as you notice that on the right side, I've created a bunch of masks, and one of them is going to be the highlights in the right side. So let's see, uh, top center, top right, top left, and mid-ground rock. So there you go. When I turn on this layer, you notice that the highlights over here are properly balanced. Now the, this rock face still has highlights, but it is balanced with the rest of the rock. When you're standing out on the scene, you will actually notice the balance because your eyes have far greater dynamic range than the camera does. Similarly, Let's see how what other adjustments I made. Top left highlights. 
top left highlights are the ones over here. So let's see what happens to that. As you can see, I darkened the rock just enough so that it blends out with the rest of the rock. Similarly, there is top right highlight, which is right there. So there you can see it darkened the rocks again. And top center highlight, which is this little piece over here. So I will turn on and off so you can see it. And then the other thing I notice is that the water in the midground over here is slightly too dark. And oftentimes that occurs because of the use of polarizer. So what I did was I selected just that part of the water of the image. And I actually go into having brighten it slightly. And then, as you notice that, even though the details over here are restored, um, the flow lines are not as obvious. It lacks contrast. So the last adjustment I made was actually restore the contrast in that area. So let's see what happens when I turn the last layer off. There you go. So now you can see the flow lines much better. Does it mean that I want to see the flow lines in every part of the highlights. Uh, some of the part of the highlights where the flow is very high, you really don't need to see the contrast. So this demonstrates the power of layers and masks. Now each of these areas were independently adjusted. So if you look at what I started with and what I ended up, I started off with an image which had blown highlights as well as areas of the rocks that were slightly overexposed in other areas. And the finished image not only restored the highlight, but it also made targeted adjustments to the rock face and targeted adjustments to restore the contrast. We hope that this video demonstrates what can be accomplished with layers and masks. Thanks for listening.